Maja John Nadman, my camper van around noon on Valentine's Day, February 14th. <clears throat> I am by the big playa of La Bamba Beach. I don't know if you can see it through the camper van there, next to the Punta Azul restaurant in Boca del Rio, which is, I call it a suburb. In Mexico, they don't call them suburbs. But this very affluent, outlying area of Veracruz, Mexico is so prosperous, so affluent, that it reminds me of some of the very affluent suburbs outside of Chicago. And it has reminded me or really confronted me for the first time in 11 months in Mexico with the gulf between the haves and the have-nots. It's on the gulf, that's the gulf of Mexico out there, and the Isla de Sacrificios, is that island out there? <clears throat> I spent 10 days here a couple weeks ago, and now I'm back. And uh, I've been about six weeks in Veracruz. Love Veracruz a lot, most people seem to. This area is, to me, obnoxiously affluent. Most of my time in Mexico has been with simple people, the poor people, the regular, the campesinos, the regular people of Mexico who are, I never stop saying, never tire of saying how wonderful are the people of Mexico. Muy amable, so sweet, dulce, so simple, so uh, easy to connect with, suavemente. They uh, welcome you. And I've been traveling mostly along the east coast of Mexico through an area that American tourists never come. International tourists do not come. Because if you're going to go to Veracruz, to, yeah, if you're going to go to Veracruz, uh, you, from Mexico City, there's a straight shot down here. Uh, it's mostly, mostly due east of Mexico City. And if you're coming from the U.S., you take a cruise or fly, and mostly they don't come to Veracruz. Ver Veracruz is not a huge tourist destination. They go to Cancun, they go to the Riviera Maya out at the end of the Yucatan Peninsula, Cancun, Isla Mujeres, Playa del Carmen, uh, all those resorts out there. Yesterday, I went to my favorite beach ever. These beaches are beautiful. Playa uh, La Bamba, Playa Tortugas is the next one down. This is in the affluent neighborhood and they take real good care of the beaches. And it is mostly wealthy people who frequent this beach. And it doesn't get a lot of traffic because wealthy people, they've got pools in their condos. Why go to the beach? They don't appreciate the ocean. They're sitting right next to the Gulf of Mexico, which is so spectacular. I've been almost two years, soon it'll be two years I've been traveling the Gulf of Mexico from Southwest Louisiana, the, Riv the Cajun Riviera, which is rough, but beautiful. And the beaches of South Texas, Galveston Island is unbelievable. Uh, Pod, South Padre Island, amazing. But I haven't been confronted with, I saw the gulf between the haves and the have-nots in a year in South Texas. Terrible. More poverty than I had in the, one of the richest states in the country, maybe the richest because of oil and gas. Uh, people living in bleak, bleak, bleak conditions in Texas, and that's not what you're hearing in the media. How many people are squatting in abandoned homes in Texas? Yeah, a lot. Places that should have been torn down. So my favorite beach is by the Aquario. Aquario is the aquarium, beautiful. And the beach there is called Via del Mar. And it's the people's beach, it's where everybody goes. And I couldn't record any of this yesterday because I was out of memory in my phone because I shoot videos and my iPhone is maxed out on memory. Uh, so I didn't get any of this yesterday, but I want to capture it now. 
the huge beautiful beach there and it was a gorgeous day February it was like 80 degrees and so beautiful and it's a genuinely beautiful beach but not one that the people from Boca del Rio would go to no because that means hobnobbing with people you don't want to hobnob with everybody simple people but one of the most striking things down there I was encountered encountered right away about eight indigenous women tiny little dark-skinned women uh, in their traditional dresses uh, looked like one of their granddaughters uh, or nieces or somebody had brought them down there. I heard her saying, I'll po post this photo to Facebook. And those women were amazing. They were old and they were so thrilled to be at the beach. Oh, they squealed with delight. And they'd wade out into the water, let the bottom of their dresses get wet. No bikinis for them. Uh, and it was beautiful. I got so happy on that beach because after this beach, and I also hang out down by the marina where the naval base is, the big seaport, and that's really great people. But I didn't see indigenous people there, but this part of the country has got deep indigenous roots. There are mountain towns around here, and I've been to a couple of them that are mostly indigenous people and so gorgeous, so sweet, and more to go to. I've got a video up on my YouTube about Orizaba, which the girl who was telling me in such fabulous terms about Orizaba, which is two hours south of here, did not call it indigenous, but she called it magical, magical town. And Mexico is reclaiming their respect for indigenous people in a way that is not really happening. I mean, certainly Hollywood has romanticized the American Indian even as terrible things are continuing to happen to American Indians. But in, in Mexico, which is older, it's, it, the culture has not sped up, has not, I mean, up here, yeah, this is a lot like uh, any American city. But mostly Mexico is still quite old and steeped in its roots, really devoted to tradition. And even the Mexico government, for the longest time, the myth that the reason that the Spaniards took over Mexico and Central America so easily was because Spaniards, Europeans, were just uh, evolutionarily far superior, smarter, better tools, etc. There's a great uh, podcast on the Through Line podcast from National Public Radio called The Great Conquest about the Spaniards coming here in like the 1500s, I think it was the early 1500s. And that at that time, the great city of the Mayan dynasty was way larger than London, New York City, Rome, way larger than any of them and way more sophisticated in so many ways. And that the reason that it was relatively easy for the Spaniards to conquest was not because they were braver or uh, smarter or had better tools. They did have better guns. Yeah, they had guns. Uh, but because the Indian people were curious, who are these people? Are they, are they coming in, uh, in with good intent? But meanwhile, the Spaniards all along were wanting to infiltrate and uh, take over and finally did unleash all their firepower. Uh, but what really did it for them was they brought smallpox. Yeah and the population got really sick. So that's, and up in Jalapa, which is way up in the mountains and has a traditional uh, indigenous name, X-A-L-A-P-A, -A -A, that my voice to text just can't get how to do, and will not do Jalapa for me. But it's a beautiful, stunning city, so hilly and ringed by cloud forests and extinct volcanoes. And because of that is terrible weather, terrible weather, rainy, cold, overcast almost all the time, but so fascinating. But the Mexican government is wising up that the indigenous tradition is very important to Mexico and to be honored. So there's indigenous names for cities and beaches and stuff all around through here. And outside of Jalapa, the street I parked on in the Colonia Moctezuma just just south of Jalapa was Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl. And 
you ask people around there, where did that name come from? Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Uh, they were not indigenous. But it was the last great emperor. The last emperor of the Mayan dynasty was Quetzalcoatl. So they're honoring that stuff. So on that beach, on the Via del Mar beach by the aquarium, I encountered these Mayan ladies, basically indigenous ladies, and I got so happy. Oh my God, I got so happy. I'm with the people. I'm, I'm getting close to the pulse of that rich ancient culture. And I went up and had dinner at a wonderful little restaurant, Crispin Palapa. A Palapa is a thatched building. That's over there. Maybe you can see this. Oh, I don't think I can magnify it more. But just past that red car, there's a thatched roof. You can see the thatched roof. That's a restaurant called La Palapa. La Palapa. A Palapa is a thatched roof hut like that. So this was Crispin Palapa, and it was a lovely restaurant, and I got a beautiful fish fillet there. And two really simple musicians, two beautiful men, maybe in their 40s, playing guitars so gorgeously, so talented, and singing so beautifully, came to my table. And I was, again, this is like, this is the thing. This is the real thing. This is why I'm here. I got so happy and apologized that I only had 50 pesos to give him. Uh, and I was suspicious about why the nice, attractive woman at the table right behind me was not even turning to look. Didn't, even, didn't seem to register that all this gorgeous music was going on about 15 feet away from her. And these guys then moved on to the next table to see what kind of tip they could get there. And she waved them away. Didn't even make eye contact. She just goes, whoa, go, go as if they were trash or vermin. And it broke my heart to see these gorgeous men treated so awful. And it epitomized the middle class and upper middle class attitudes towards, to me, what are the true people of Mexico who would never, who welcome you with open arms like, like the Mayans did and like everybody has welcomed me along the coast of Mexico. So sweet. The guys, they, they do papers in the U.S. about how hard it is for adults to make friends. Not in Mexico, no. The guys especially, they love to have amigos. And they haven't been ruined on American tourists because there aren't many here. So they take me in. The number of cab drivers and restaurant servers and other people have said, here's my WhatsApp number because they use WhatsApp down here. As, if, if they ask for your phone number, they mean your, your WhatsApp number, even businesses. That's... That's the number they'll give. Uh, yeah, here's my WhatsApp number, call me if you ever have trouble, if you need anybody. And they mean it, they're not just saying it, they mean it. So guys love to call you amigo and I've become amigos with a lot of Mexican guys. And some of them stay in touch, some of them follow my YouTube channel and leave comments. So the clash of cultures, the clash of cultures. I'm going to call it there. There's so much more I could say about safety and safe travel in Mexico and parenting in Mexico. But I say it all in other videos on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. You're supposed to say that. Don't say it at the beginning. YouTube says that. Don't say it at the beginning. But at the end, remind people. Please subscribe. Because I, I had a thousand followers on TikTok. But I don't have time to load to both places. And I'm under a hundred followers still on YouTube. So please subscribe, okay? <laughs> and leave a comment, and I will. Re I do reply to all comments. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.